uh, I want to explain what are the methods and principles of the urban design. Uh, one of the fundamental uh, thoughts behind uh, the urban design is the idea of degrowth. Growth that we have today is based on consuming fossils, fossil resources and all the resources of the planet in a way that uh, is not sustainable and is creating lots of pollutions and environmental uh, degradations and defore deforestation, natural disasters, climate crisis and societal crisis, lots of wars, inequalities and lots of other things. This is not sustainable because the way that we use our resources is we are using almost two times more than what the earth produces every year. So that means that we cannot continue this way forever. So we need to stop it somewhere. And because our uh, fossil fuel resources are limited uh, and the, the earth is limited, so we don't have two earths. You know, we have only one earth and this is very limited. So it is not only for us and for our generation, but also it is for uh, the future generations and for all the other living beings. So accordingly, we need to change our attitude, but we need to reach to a society that this society will be stable and uh, will be somehow in a sustainable and resilient mode. So how, how it is possible? So first of all, the movement starts with a kind of civil disobedience, which means people of these uh, societies, they, they develop resistance against the existing growth uh, idea. That's called anti-growth. The immediate uh, movement and uh, thought that is needed to be generated is uh, the idea of anti-growth. But in the short term, we need to move to a kind of voluntary simplicity, what it's called ultra-growth. Uh, only the growth it cannot be the main concern. So we need to think of restoring some ecologies, think about forests, think about oceans, think about reducing the pollutions and this kind of things. So this is called uh, alter growth, all the social and ecological uh, disasters of today's uh, civilization is affecting the life of people and the life of the other beings is uh, forcing us to take immediate actions and to create alter growth uh, strategies in a short term. That means in probably in five years we need to change our attitudes. But towards the midterm in 2050 we need to aim a society that it's reached to the peak of the growth. The big, big point that from that point we need to start uh, moving towards a big growth movement. From that point, we need to turn to a condition that one earth will be enough for all of us. And this is called degrowth. And the ultimate goal is a no growth or in a completely sustainable situation. So this is what we need to plan in three generations. One of the first things that we need to do is to uh, leave half of the earth for the other beings, for the planet earth, to recover itself, to recycle itself. Yeah. So we need to uh, take our foods out of this half of the earth. And this means in, in all the areas that we want to uh, uh, apply the urban design. One of the first rules that we need to take it into the attention is to empty half of that area for non-humans, for the planet Earth. If the cities, the urbanized areas that we are working on them, they 
are fully urbanized and occupied all the forests and uh, urbanized all the rivers, all the river banks, all the uh, coastal areas, then what we need to do is we need to uh, make some ecological restorations in these areas. So we, 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 we left now half of the land, half of the urbanized area, uh, mainly forests, uh, rivers, river banks, uh, seas, oceans, and the coastal areas, and the ecological corridors to the wildlife. So what, what we will do with the rest, uh, with the urbanized areas of today? So what we have to do is we need to plan a transition from the wicked problem, the most important wicked problem of today, which is urbanization. We want to reach to the self-sufficient, self-organizing and ecocentric and ethical uh, city. So this transition will, is happening in three generations. Uh, this is what we need to plan. Expanding spiral. That means we use less energies and less resources and produce more yields. So this must be our aim. Nowadays, the way that we are living in this urbanized world, we use more energy and more uh, resources and produce less yields because we have lots of pollution. So we need to reverse it. We need to start with degradable materials to reduce the waste of uh, the system. Uh, and we need to build systems that they are self self-regulating systems, so they will not need maintenance. And so on. We need to recognize the biodiversity by uh, recognizing the niches of different uh, beings. And we need to think about multifunctionality. We need to build more intensive systems rather, rather than distributed systems. We need to think about integration. We need to think about edges and the meeting points. We need to increase collaboration and think about evolution of the system that we are building. And at the end, the, all the yields of the system needs to be distributed fairly, which we call it fair share. So, yeah, we need to rescale the community life. So what is today's scale of community life? Today's scale of community life is nationwide communities. We all carry national identities. And the nation states, the central governments in our nation states, they organize all our relations. If this is not a sustainable scale, it's a huge scale and it produces a huge power over the people and limits their freedom, limits their ability to control everything uh, related to them and creates lots of wastes. Uh, the schemes showing us different scales that communities can be in relation to each other. So we interpreted this drawing to our the urban design, uh, let's say, uh, concept. Our biggest circle that we call it city. But of course, cities will communicate. Cities will come together and we'll have some dialogues, we'll have some exchange, as it was always during the history. Okay? So hopefully this time they will not fight against each other. The main scales are these five scales. So we need to create sustainable household, sustainable clan or community, sustainable neighborhoods, sustainable districts, and sustainable cities. So each of these five uh, scale must be reorganized and retailed. When we are speaking about the household and the organization of the house, we are speaking about the private areas and the common areas between people. And then the next scale is clan or community. So this is the uh, 20 to 30 people, five to 10, you know, houses, uh, either vertically are organized or horizontally are organized, but these are coming together and establishing a community. Uh, 
the, the idea behind these communities is bring the people of household together and create a shared economy between them. So how this shared economy can be established. So one of them is uh, kitchen, organization of this uh, food uh, production for the community is one of the main things that can be the basis for the shared economy. So what does it mean? It means that the, the few households that they come together, they can have shared kitchen as a community. But this is not the only thing. But also they can collect water, they can produce electricity, they can uh, share their experiences with each other, they can have a small workshop in the community and uh, they, they, they can garden, they can uh, do carpentry, they can produce some furniture, they can, they can do lots of things in the workshop that they can have uh, in their community and they can also enjoy, you know, together. They can teach each other music, they can uh, have story reading or storytelling sessions, they can watch movies together, they can, you know, they can organize lots of activities together. As much as the shared areas and the shared spaces and the shared economies between these community members is raised, the community will be more strong and more detached to each other. So this is one of the aims of the urban design to create more detached community members to each other. That will create a resiliency. Uh, community members will support each other in, in different periods of life and they can take care of each other. So this is, this is very important to have such a community. Next scale is the neighborhood scale. So in the neighborhood scale, what we have, we have clans, different clans, yeah? But what else do we have? We have number of people between 300 to 2,000 people. So in this scale, you will need a nursery. You will need a bigger uh, community garden for bigger productions. So it will not be only a truck garden to produce daily vegetables, but this time you will have uh, fruit trees, you will have uh, bigger animals, so not only chickens, but sometimes bigger animals as well uh, in that uh, community garden. So you will have a multifunctional hall that can be used for uh, funerals, can be used for weddings, can be used for birthday parties, can be used for uh, other parties, can be used for small theater shows, can be used for everything that the community can uh, have. This is the scale that all the waste must be recycled uh, in this scale. If, if the density is high, the street is in the neighborhood scale. So you, you have different households inside each building and the joint of them as neighborhood around one street or one uh, central areas. So this is neighborhood. So the, the next uh, scale is the district. Different neighborhoods in this district, each of them self-sufficient, self-organizing and, you know, ecocentric and all of these. But in addition to these, we need a, an exchange center, the place that you can exchange knowledge, you can exchange goods, you can exchange materials, you can exchange facilities, you can ex exchange tools and lots of other things. So you, you, you can have now a community center because you have a population of 3,000 to 40,000 people. So you will have uh, more uh, cultural products so you can share them with each other. You can have a healthcare unit and you can have a carpool, the clan or uh, neighborhood scale. You can have bicycle pool or quadricycle pool. You can uh, have uh, libraries, you can have cafes, restaurants, and many other uh, shared activities in the district level. But the last scale of the self-sufficient, self-organizing uh, community, more than human community that we want to uh, create is the big city. 
So in the big city, you can have the bigger exchange area. So in the neighborhood one, they can be some, sometimes temporal. So weekly exchange uh, activities can happen in the uh, center, but you can have the bigger one in the city and more permanent one, that this is an area that people of different districts come together and meet each other with different cultures, with different uh, needs, so they can have bigger exchange of ideas and uh, things. So if we have uh, schools, uh, the schools for the children, smaller children as nurseries, kindergartens, and even sometimes elementaries in the, in the neighborhood scale. So we have uh, schools for bigger children in the district level, and we have universities in the level of uh, city. We have public libraries, we have bigger hospitals, we, we have some public transportation uh, facilities that they uh, ease the movement between districts and between neighborhoods. And we, we, we have wildlife strategies in that scale. So we have city halls that is, acts as kind of uh, direct democratic uh, parliaments that people go there and share their ideas about the future of the cities and shape the vision of the future of that city. So cities have the population are between 50,000 to 1 million people and uh, have these, these, these uh, organizations in different scales. The life in each of these uh, scales need to be reorganized in a way that if you can do something in the household, you do it in the household and not in the uh, clan. So always the smaller scale will have a priority. This will reduce your mobility. But of course, there must be some, uh, some of the activities for the shared areas. Yeah. As much as possible, you need to increase the shared environment and the shared econo economies and shared activities. But you need to reduce your, mo your uh, movement, uh, but increase the shared part. So this is, this is the main challenge. The model for this organization is, this is what we call it distributed model. So if you can see here, we have centralized model and cent decentralized model and distributed model. So centralized model means that all the facilities or all everything is provided from a center, we call it centralized. Decentralized, we, it means that we have one center, but we have more centers, you know, so that they distribute, uh, they provide these facilities or whatever. But the distributed one means that in themselves, each of these points are self-sufficient and self-organizing. This is more resilient system. Distributed system, give more power to communities, give more power to neighborhoods and to the districts. So this is uh, an image from the Totnes Pound that uh, people, of, people living in the town Totnes, they established the transition movement. And one of the first things that they did, they printed their own banknotes. Why they did this? Because they wanted to increase the uh, shared economy and they want to create the possibility that people in the same town, they, they have their own economy and their own uh, self-sufficiency and their own uh, independency. So this is, this is very important, you know, this is what is called self-organizing, you know, so you can have your own, you can have a control over your own economy. Then you will know what, what you have, what you don't have, and to produce uh, what you don't have, what you need to do. So you will have the control on what you are doing. So one of the main things uh, regarding the self-organization and self-sufficiency is production of food. So these are some calculations that how, how much land you need to produce food. And so uh, one of the main rules that we apply in Dearborn design is that the food production lands must be very close to the neighborhoods. So we organize the food productions in the neighborhood scale, in district scale, and in the city scale, in all these, these scales, 
in all the scales that I show you, we organize the self-sufficiency of the food. So some of the food that needs larger lands are organized in the city scale. We have food forests, the district scale and neighborhood scale and the clan scale. Uh, you can organize different scales of food productions. But the main rule is that any land for the food production can be maximum 20 kilometer far from the people. Maximum 20 kilometer far from the place that people are living, they must have access to the food that they are using. So the food that people are using must come maximum from 20 kilometer far. And of course the food production for these people must be uh, produced in regenerative agricultural way. So we need to think about regenerative agriculture, permaculture, and this kind of things. So we need to change our lifestyle in the short term as anti-growth movement and then to reach to a growth and then the degrowth way. So we need to, first of all, refuse. Refuse what we don't really need. Refuse buying. Refuse uh, consuming more than what we need. And we need to reduce our needs. We need to uh, reuse whatever that is reusable and we need to recycle what we can recycle them. We need to collect water, we need to do some uh, calculations that the urban design provides regarding the collection of water, the production of electricity and the uh, production of other facilities. One of the things that during the de-urbanization uh, you are going to do is you will move mo most of the activities to the local uh, scale so accordingly the transportation will be reduced and because one of the main aims that you are uh, is forcing you to do the urbanization is the lack of the fossil uh, fuels and your uh, desire to reduce the dependency to the fossil fuels accordingly uh, you are planning and uh, envisioning a future that the uh, usage of fossil fuels is minimum. That means that uh, you will not have this much of uh, freedom to use your uh, private cars to go everywhere. And that means that you will not need this much of roads in the future. The refunctioning of these roads are one of the main sources that will give you the opportunity to create more one public spaces two spaces for agriculture so in, in front of the each building we have an area that's called frontage zone okay so this frontage zone is zero to six foot so each foot is around 30 centimeter so when we say six foot we means 1.8 centimeters so 180 centimeter one meter and 80 centimeter so what is this zone this frontage zone if the area that uh, you are designing is full of cafes full of restaurants so it's a kind of high street that people uh, also sit in the street and enjoy having coffee or uh, something else in front of the restaurants, then you have uh, up to six inch. So this, the second part is your pedestrian zone. So this pedestrian zone, uh, again, if it is a high street, then you have in both sides uh, up to eight foot. Eight foot means around 2.5 meter. Uh, but if it is a just a small street that few buildings with few families are living there, then it is six foot and only in one side of the street is enough, okay? You don't need to have it in the both sides of the streets. Uh, so the, the third uh, section of the street is what's called furniture and landscape uh, part. So here, what you can do is, first of all, you can design uh, an edible landscape beside the pedestrian pavement. 
that uh, so you can grow food, you can collect the water of the pavement and the water of the street uh, in these areas, and you can uh, direct all these waters inside these uh, small gardens that you are designing there. And you can put some furniture for uh, sitting of the people, for uh, socializing of them, for uh, very very small children playgrounds, or 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 anything else. Okay, so this is this is uh, approximately around two meter, less than two meters, so six foot. And then uh, you have one and a half meter bicycle road. So it is one way bicycle road. So if it is two way bicycle road, it needs to be three meter. Okay. And then uh, you have a buffer of the bicycle road, uh, three foot uh, less than one meter. And then you have eight foot of flexible lane. So this flexible lane either is used for car parking, for bus stops, for small parklets, we can have bicycle park areas, parking areas, and etc. You can also have some uh, green and fruit growing landscapes. And then you have two lanes of uh, 11 each, 11 foot each. Uh, this can be if, if you have lots of big buses passes from there, so you can make it 12 foot to, 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 to have enough area. Uh, if it is only private cars, you can reduce it even to 10 foot. So it's between 10 to 12 foot of uh, lane for, for cars. So this is, this is for both sides in the high streets. The road that goes to the buildings, to the household, the clans, inside the clans, okay? So there, you don't uh, need really private cars every day. Okay, so in case of emergency, if there is a fire, if there is a need for an ambulance to access to a building, uh, or if you have something very heavy, you want to carry it to your home, you will need a car to come close to the building. But regularly, you will not have uh, cars inside the class. And it is not recommended because uh, otherwise the uh, streets will become full of cars not full of people, not full of children, not, you know. So it is good to give the streets back to the people, not to the cars. That means that the car roads and bicycle roads can merge. So you can have only one 11 foot road divided to two parts with a, with a line on it that is for bicycle and quadricycle, uh, two ways. And in case of emergency, the ambulance or police or fire, fire truck, they can use this line, okay? So one lane of 11 inch is enough. If, if you have minimum uh, 50 foot road, that means uh, you will have around more than half of it to use for your uh, agricultural and public space purpose. And this is a, a street in a clan. So in, the, in as an immediate action, the student added a, a bicycle lane here and some, uh, let's say landscape elements. And then in uh, midterm, uh, turn the street more as a, a uh, road that's used by uh, bicycles normally, but in case of emergency also, the car can access to it. So it, it can have more spaces for landscape and for people. And in the long term also is reduce the, the area, okay? So this is the mentality uh, behind this uh, using of these uh, roads as the multi-purpose roads, okay?